Today I'm going to show you how to flash a bootloader to your Ender 3 so you can update the firmware. If you followed my last video, you've hopefully 3D printed and fitted some great upgrades to improve the performance of your Ender 3. In this video, we're going to take things a step further by upgrading the firmware. But to do that, we need to flash a bootloader. Well, you might be thinking, why upgrade the firmware? Well, I've already made a whole video about this, and my number one argument for doing so is safety. Since my review video, Creality has made this printer completely open source, and I really applaud them for that. As well as the physical files and the wiring, this includes their version of the Marlin firmware. As you browse through it, you can see that it's kind of out of date, and it doesn't include things like thermal runaway protection. Imagine the situation on a long print where your thermistor, your heater cartridge comes loose. The printer can't register the temperature, it keeps on pumping in voltage to the heater, and that's a recipe for disaster. Thermal runaway protection aims to monitor this and shut things down if need be. The other reason to upgrade the firmware is that it allows you to do more advanced modifications such as different hot ends with different thermistors and things like auto bed leveling such as the BL touch which I'll be covering soon. Now this video is going to be 90% setup and only 10% action, but it's worthwhile. The tools that you need are a little hex key to remove the cover for the electronics, a set of DuPont or jumper wires, you're going to need five female to female and one male to female. If you don't have a set of these, which you can get cheaply online, you can also make your own by getting one of these wiring kits, which is what I did for this video. The last thing you need besides an actual Ender 3 is an Arduino Uno or a clone. This is a super cheap one that works great for this purpose and I'll have the link to get it from Banggood down below. Before we get started on this, we need to explore our two options we have for firmware. Now, as I said, Creality have released all of the Ender 3 firmware files, but I wouldn't recommend doing that one because it's an old version of Marlin, and as we covered, it doesn't have thermal runaway protection. The other option is the TH3D Unified Firmware, which is community made, but very well established and very reliable. It's been used on many Creality printers, as well as ANETs and Alpha Wises. If you upgrade to this firmware, as I show you in the video, you're instantly going to get thermal runaway protection and you're going to get easy support of more advanced mods down the track. The only downside is you're going to lose the power panic feature that comes stock with the printer. But since the factory firmware has been released, I reckon they're going to implement that pretty soon. Let's get started by switching to the computer and downloading the files that we need. So firstly, we'll start with the official firmware from Creality 3D Printing for the Ender 3. And the one we're after is the Marlin firmware here. If you want to go this option, the easiest thing to do is to hit the green button here and then download a zip. After you download it, the zip is going to have many folders, but the only one we're after is the Ender 3, including Power Your Failure Resume in English, which I have extracted to my Arduino sketch folder. Let's open it up and see what's in there. Now, if we go Control F and we tick search all tabs and then we put in thermal, We can see that searching through the whole thing, there's only two mentions of the word thermal, and that means that thermal runaway protection is not in this version of the firmware. So instead we have the TH3D Unified Firmware Package. It's by Timothy Hoogland, and as it says here, it's Marlin, but basically he's organized everything to make the experience as easy as possible. It covers a range of printers, which are all listed here. Most importantly for us, it covers the Ender 3. So what I suggest you do is download the full package as it has a special version of Arduino set up for the Arduino board on our printer, which won't show up in the normal Arduino IDE. After you download it, you unzip it and all you need to do is open this batch file, open firmware for Windows. So it will open up a specially prepared version of Arduino. And let me show you what the differences are. Firstly, when we come to tools and then we come to board, it has the Sanguino board that we need Whereas in normal Arduino IDE, that won't be there and we need to install it separately. So already this is worthwhile just to save some time. But as it says here, all setting changes are made in the configuration H file and that's pretty normal for Marlin. However, if we come to here, we'll see that they've put a whole bunch of custom code here and all of the code we're used to seeing has been moved to here. If you know what you're doing, this isn't going to phase you at all. It does make it really easy for a beginner to come along and enable the things they need to. But before we do that, we need to flash a bootloader. So we've got our firmware ready, but unfortunately, if we connect our USB cable from the printer to the laptop and try and upload as we normally would, we're gonna get an error about it not syncing. And that's because this board is missing a bootloader. 
To put it simply, a bootloader is a little piece of the firmware that makes it possible to update the main firmware via USB cable, and in our case, it's missing. As I said before, after a few minutes setup, this process is extremely easy to do and we only have to do it once. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is to use our hex key and undo the three bolts that hold on the top electronics cover. To get to the back one, you should slowly move your bed forward and that will expose the screw at the back and then you'll be able to remove it easily. When you pull it off, the fan will still be connected. So just carefully place it down to the side. Next, we're gonna plug in our Uno and we're actually gonna spin it around so the USB slot is facing towards the printer. I'm actually gonna lift up the front of the printer. I'm gonna wedge it so the board is just under there. That's gonna make it much easier for me to align my wiring. So we're gonna use the Uno to temporarily flash the bootloader onto our 3D printing board. So let's set that up now. The first thing we're gonna do is come up to file and then go to examples and come down to Arduino ISP. We're then gonna to come to tools and hopefully you should be seeing Uno there and you should be seeing one COM port as well if you've already plugged it in. Now all we simply need to do is hit the upload button. The Uno is now set up as a programmer so let's connect it to the Ender 3. Time to use these jumper wires to connect the Uno to the Melzi inside the Ender 3. Now this might seem complicated at first, but once you've got it connected, you'll see it's actually quite simple. I'm gonna flash up some images of what to do because it's far too hard to record this in this confined area. If you pause the video and connect things as I show you, this is quite straightforward. We're gonna start with our five female to female jumper wires and we're gonna put them in one at a time, matching them up from one board to the other. This means that if something is in the top left on one, it's in the top left on the other. I recommend starting with the ones on the left as we're looking from this photo. If you do the ones on the right, it's gonna be hard to get over this metal case to plug them in. So that's five out of our six wires done. And I'd like to note that the color that you connect them is not important as all, as long as one board matches the other in terms of position, which means the lower left goes to the lower left and so forth. The last one left is this male to female jumper cable and a little bit differently from the others, we're gonna plug it into pin 10 on the Arduino and then into the remaining pin on the Melzi on the Ender 3. Now that remaining pin should be on the top right, which means it's the closest one to the lettering that says Creality 3D V1. That's it, we're all wired up. We can plug in the Uno and you'll notice the power is going through the Uno into the Ender 3, so the screen will light up. So let's switch back to the computer and flash this bootloader. All right, this bit is super simple now that we've connected all the wiring. So let's go to tools and we're going to change it from Arduino Uno to Sanguino. And if you wanna double check the other settings, that is going to be a 1284p and it should be the 16 megahertz board. Still gonna be COM port 13 because that's what the Uno was plugged into. We're gonna change it from AVRSP Mark II, which is the default, down to Arduino as ISP. And then the final step is to come to tools and say burn bootloader. After a few short seconds, it will say done burning bootloader and the hardest part of the process is over. Great news, that's the most complicated part done. So we can disconnect the Uno and we can pull out all of this wiring from the ISCP header. Pull this out of the way and we are done with this part of it. From now on, when we flash firmware, all we do is take our usual cable and we plug it into the front of the 3D printer and then directly into our laptop. And that means we're ready to upload our actual firmware. We are on to the good bit. So we have no more use for this Arduino ISP sketch, so we can close that. Let's get our settings right before we go any further. So let's go to tools and put our programmer back to AVRASP Mark II, the default. We'll also make sure our port is set to whatever one comes up for you, which should be different from before because now we're directly connected to the Melzi. There's very little we have to do here to configure for the Ender 3, and that's because the developer has done such a fantastic job of making this easy. So we're gonna scroll down and it's gonna show us all of our different printers that we have available. We're gonna uncomment one printer, and that just entails removing the two slashes. So let's come down until we find Ender 3. And here's our line here, line 135 on this version of the firmware. 
delete, delete. We are now set up for Ender 3. As it stands, that's enough we need to do to upload, but we're gonna look at one or two more things. If you scroll down far enough or just do Control F for MISC for miscellaneous, we'll find two things of note. As the firmware flashes, it's gonna change the loading screen. If you prefer to keep the standard one, then simply uncomment that. You can also change the printer name. By default, it's gonna come up with the firmware string, which is not the most attractive name. So you can uncomment that and then in between the double quotation marks, type in what you want. So I'm just gonna put in Ender 3. That's everything we need to do. We're on the right board, the right COM port, and the right programmer. So now all we need to do is hit upload. We know we're successful because it says done uploading instead of an error. And if you're watching the screen, it would have come up with the end of splash screen and then the version of the firmware that we're using. That's it. If you follow step by step, I would suggest that's pretty painless. And fortunately, that's the only time you ever have to flash the bootloader. From now on, anytime you do a firmware update or change, you simply plug in your USB cable from the computer to the printer and hit upload. It'll all work for you. All that remains is to attach the cover on top. Being careful not to snag the two wires that come out to the end stop for the Z axis. And then you're ready to print. Just to make sure it's clear, you won't get any printing performance upgrade from doing this. It's simply for safety and scaling to future mods down the track. Now I notice a lot of people complaining about receiving a warped bed for this printer. So I think it would be opportune for me to cover how to add auto bed leveling and that will be in the next video. Hopefully you found this one helpful. Thanks so much for watching. And until then, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.